Hi everyone, this is Dr. Manu Krishnanki and today we will be discussing about the anatomy of ventricular system of the brain. So there is a particular system of cavities which circulates the CSF in and around the brain. So we have discussed that in like in a brief way in the previous classes. So today we will be discussing it in detail. The interior of brain contains a series of cavities which intercommunicates with each other for the circulation of CSF and that is termed as the ventricular system of brain. The entire ventricular system is lined by an epithelial layer called as the ependymum. And the ventricular system is composed of two lateral ventricles, the third ventricle which is the median cavity and the fourth ventricle. So these are the ventricles which are present in the system. There are two lateral ventricles, a third ventricle and a fourth ventricle. So the same I have depicted in a flow chart here. We have got the two lateral ventricles, the left and right lateral ventricles, which will open up into the third ventricle and from the third ventricle to the fourth ventricle and the fourth ventricle, the cavity continues as the central canal of the spinal cord. So the connection between the lateral ventricle and the third ventricle is nothing but the foramina of Monroe. So this foramina of Monroe, otherwise known as the interventricular foramen, connects the lateral ventricle to that of the third ventricle. And the second one is the cerebral aqueduct which connects between the third ventricle and the fourth ventricle which is otherwise known as the aqueduct of Sylvius and finally the fourth ventricle will allow the circulation of CSF into the central canal of spinal cord. So this is the flow pattern of the CSF within the cavities. So you have to remember there are two lateral ventricles then a third ventricle, a fourth ventricle and it continues to the spinal cord as the central canal. So this is what the basic idea of the ventricular system is. So let's see how we can diagrammatically represent the same. So here I'm drawing a rough diagram of the ventricular system. I'm just drawing the cerebrum. Then we have the cerebellum below it. We have studied that in the previous class. Same thing I'm drawing on the opposite side. We have the cerebrum and we have the cerebellum here. And now well, let's start with the ventricular system. So we have two lateral ventricles and these lateral ventricles will open up into the third ventricle. Here we can see the third ventricle, this one, the median one is the third ventricle. So this one over here is the third ventricle. And the third ventricle will come down as the cerebral aqueduct and where it have a diamond shaped fourth ventricle here. And that will continue down as the central canal of spinal cord. So I repeat, here we have the two lateral ventricles the interventricular foramina or foramina of Monroe then we have the third ventricle then we have the cerebral aqueduct which opens into the fourth ventricle here and it continues down as the central canal of spinal cord so this is the basic structure of the ventricular system so let's discuss the lateral ventricle in detail now the lateral ventricle are two cavities situated within the telencephalic part of each cerebral hemisphere and it is a C-shaped cavity with four parts. I repeat, there are four parts for the lateral ventricle and they are the body, that is the central part, anterior horn, a posterior horn and an inferior horn. So let's see the same here. So here I am drawing a rough diagram of the lateral ventricle. 
So here you can see the lateral ventricle is like this where it is having an anterior horn here then it is having a central part here we have the posterior horn here and here we have the inferior horn so these are the four parts of the lateral ventricle we have the anterior horn here which lies anterior to the interventricular foramina so this one is foramina of monroe where the lateral ventricle opens into the third ventricle which is located here so i am not drawing it because you should not get confused so the part of the lateral ventricle which lies anterior to the interventricular foramina is termed as the anterior horn we have the body here or the central part here then here we have the posterior horn and here we have the inferior horn and you can see a small triangular area here isn't it and this triangular area is termed as the trigon or the atrium of the lateral ventricle so these are the parts you have to remember regarding the lateral ventricles so let's discuss each part of it the first one is the elongated central part which is elongated andro posteriorly and anteriorly it is continuous with the anterior horn of lateral ventricle at the level of the interventricular foramina that we have already discussed and posteriorly it reaches the splenium of corpus callosum and there are certain parts for the central part itself so it has got a roof it has got a medial wall and a flow and the roof is formed by the trunk or the body of the corpus callosum while the medial wall is formed by a layer called as the septum pellucidum which separates the two ventricles the two lateral ventricles then we have the floor which is formed by the superior surface of the thalamus medially and the caudate nucleus laterally so let's see the same here here you can see the lateral ventricle above which there is a corpus callosum so that defines the roof then you can see the medial wall here you can see a small structure hanging down that is the septum pellucidum which separates the two lateral ventricles then on the floor you can see medially it is formed by the superior surface of the thalamus laterally by the caudate nucleus so these are the relations that you should know regarding the central part of the lateral ventricle the second part that is nothing but the anterior part which lies anterior to the central part and it lies in front of the interventricular foramen and it is triangular in cross section if you take a cross section a coronal section through it it will be triangular having a roof a floor and a medial wall so the roof is formed by the most anterior part of the trunk of the corpus callosum as we have seen how the central part roof is formed that will be continuing the corpus callosum will be continuing forwards so it is formed by the anterior part of anterior most part of the corpus callosum and the floor is formed by the head of the caudate nucleus in the previous classes we have studied the shape of caudate nucleus it is having a head a body and a tail so the head part that is the initial part of the caudate nucleus it forms the floor of the anterior horn of the lateral ventricle while the medial wall is formed by nothing but the septum pellucidum so let's see how it is formed so i am here i'm roughly drawing it so we'll have a better idea about it here there is a triangular section of the lateral ventricle anterior horn of lateral ventricle and i'm drawing the corpus callosum above it here you can see the corpus callosum so the roof is formed by the corpus callosum then i'm drawing the septum pellucidum here pardon me 
here we have the septum pellucidum so that forms the medial wall of the anterior horn of lateral ventricle and on the lateral side I am drawing the head of the caudate nucleus so this one is the head of caudate nucleus so this defines the relations of anterior horn of the lateral ventricle so it's simple to remember there is corpus callosum above that is the roof then septum pellucidum on the medial side and we have the head of the caudate nucleus laterally so this defines the relations of the anterior horn of lateral ventricle then comes the posterior horn which extends backwards into the occipital lobe and it is composed of a roof and a lateral wall and that roof and lateral wall is formed by the tapetum it's a sheet of fibers from the splenium of corpus callosum so i have told you about its like tail portion of the corpus callosum which is called as the splenium of corpus callosum in the previous classes so a tapetum is a sheet of fibers arising from there and that forms the roof and lateral wall of the posterior horn then we have the medial wall which has two elevations they are called the bulb of the posterior horn and the calcar avis so let's see the same here so i am drawing the cavity of the posterior horn here so here you can see the posterior horn of lateral ventricle and here i am going to draw the tapetum that is a sheet of fibers arising from the splenium of corpus callosum so that will be forming the roof as well as the lateral wall that's why it is explained together the roof and lateral wall roof will be here and the lateral wall will be a continuation of that so that is formed by nothing but the tapetum and medially there are two elevations that is one is the bulb of the posterior horn and the second elevation is the calcar alveus calcar alveus and that is formed by the calcarine sulcus that will protrude and it will form an elevation on the lower part of the medial wall here so this defines the posterior horn of the lateral ventricle then we have the inferior horn the inferior horn begins at the posterior end of the central part and it runs downwards and forwards into the temporal lobe it's a very narrow cavity which is bounded by the roof which is having a lateral part and a medial part the lateral part by the fibers of tapetum and the medial part by the tail of the caudate nucleus and stria terminalis while the floor is formed by the hippocampus so the major portion of the floor is formed by the hippocampus so that much is only required so it is formed by the hippocampus so let's see the same here i am drawing this cross section of the inferior horn here so this will be the inferior horn if you take a cross section and the floor is formed by the hippocampus so here is the hippocampus so the floor is formed by the hippocampus and the roof is formed by the tapetum like you can see laterally it is formed by the tapetum that is a sheet of fibers rising from the corpus callosum from the splenial part then on the medial aspect like here you can see the tail portion of the caudate nucleus so this is how the inferior horn is related to the structures and the function of this cavities is to hold the csf right so the csf production is possible by a tuft of capillaries that is called as a choroid plexus a plexus or network of capillaries which extends into the central part the inferior horn and the trigon of the lateral ventricles will produce the csf and that csf will be transmitted or like circulated through the ventricular system of the brain
So we have seen the ventricular system, how it is formed, the basic components or the basic cavities of that. Then we have seen how they communicate with each other by certain foramina. And we have seen the relations of different parts of the lateral ventricle. So in the next class we will be studying about the third ventricle and fourth ventricle. Till then, 